Hey YouTube, another boot video coming your way. And again, who doesn't love boot videos? So we'll start off with everyone's favorite, the classic Iron Rangers. I guess, uh, been around for, I don't know, seven, eight years now by Iron Ranger, put together by a a Japanese designer, Japanese artist that kind of went through the old archives of the of Red Wing and they brought this back, called it the Iron Ranger and it really was just an old style uh, shoe. I know we call them boots now but they were in reality shoes uh, back at the turn of the century uh, 1900, 1910, 1920, 1930s they had a shoe that was leather made that was uh, a Goodyear welt. The Goodyear welt is the design to where when they have the shoe on the mold, which is called the last, the, the sole's not going to be on it, but the the welt right there is stitched onto both the the insole, the midsole, the upper, this part, and then once they have that all stitched on, it's independent. It's by itself. They can glue the sole on and stitch it down. And the gentleman who invented that style, or who patented a machine to stitch it like that, uh, was the son of the guy that, of the Goodyear company that makes Goodyear tires. So, uh, shoes and tires, I guess, is what they're good at. So, Goodyear welt, uh, full grain hide leather, just a really durable uh, boot that I've enjoyed. It does need a resole, but I'm going to take them down as far as they can go. It has a nitrile cork bottom. So the nitrile cork is the nitrile rubber that was kind of innovative back in the day, turn of the century. Uh, rubber really wasn't used that much until the late 1800s into the turn of the century and so they started adding little bits of cork in here. Now I don't know if that's real cork or not. You can kind of see it. I've pulled it out and it seems more rubbery. It seems more of a rubber than an actual cork so maybe it's kind of a the cork is impregnated with rubber it could be real cork I don't know cork is like a I think a bark of a tree uh, and, and other standout points of these boots are um, they just very well made they're I would say water resistant you're not going to be standing in water for a long time but that Goodyear welt lends itself to uh, a good uh, water resistant when you're out working. These boots weigh uh, just at two pounds each. So you have four pounds of boot on your feet, on your body, when you're walking around with this. That's um, compared to this Nike, your standard Nike tennis shoe, running shoe, uh, cross, cross fit, cross training shoe. This is 14 ounces. So this is two ounces under a pound. So grab your shoe and kind of feel how it feels this is going to be twice this. Um, I don't notice it that much. Some people really have issues with it. I guess the ultra marathoners, they want a shoe that's going to, what, ounces add up to pounds, pounds add, add up to back injury, whatever they say. There's a saying for ounces, pounds, blah, 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 when you're hiking. But when you're going every day with this boot, um, I really don't notice the difference. I don't, uh, my feet don't get tired. What's really nice about it is the insole. I had somebody ask about the insoles on these. I don't put any insoles in this. It has a a full grain leather midsole or insole and underneath that they have it filled with a cork. Little line of cork, of cork and what that does is over time with your movement, your sweat, your heat of your body uh, your feet will form an impression in there. Kind of make it an own personalized insole and that's what I go with. I don't like putting in any Dr. Shoals or anything like that. I deal with the discomfort for a little while on the feet and before you know it you'll stop and realize and say hey this this fits my foot like it should and that's how boots were made and that's how they should be made that you should have a little bit of discomfort at the beginning. Um, I've gone to some other videos of how to fit boots on your feet and you can look at those videos I'll, I'll tag it up here in the, in the side on how um, a boot should fit you but um, again I call these boots but they are a sh they are a shoe uh, I guess traditional uh, work shoe where you could go out in the field and work all day in the factory, take it home, polish it up, 
uh, brush it off and go to your evening activities, go to dinner, uh, go to church on Sundays, and uh, that's how they did it. Uh, so there's the, the quick review, I guess, of the, the Iron Ranger uh, 8111 by Red Wing. Another really old school traditional way of making a boot is the way that Whites does it up in, up in Washington. Uh, Nix makes them, uh, JK Boots makes them like this. There's only a handful of boots that are handmade like this, I mean truly handmade, um, and, and these are, are some of them. They were originally designed as a, a uh, just a forestry boot, a logger boot. The loggers needed a good sturdy boot that they could go and hike around. And the way that this was designed is, uh, let me go back to this real quick, I'm sorry. Here we have, to keep a boot rigid, if you notice you bend it like that, it's not bending here. That's because between about halfway here to right about there, there's a shank. And the shank is maybe inch and a half wide. And that gives you your, your structure of the boot and your stability. Because if not, it would be like a, I guess like a slipper and it would just fold in half. And your feet would really hurt. And so, this one has a steel shank. The White's boots, they put in a big leather shank. And that leather shank kind of extends the same. It's just a really thick uh, piece of leather that goes in there and offers a really hard, stable uh, boot. So when you're hiking around in the debris and the logs, going uphill, going downhill, uh, your heel is stable, your midfoot is stable, and then your, your, your forefoot can really move around and climb. Uh, these boots are... A, I guess a stitch down style to where it's not quite the Goodyear welt because it does have the upper is molded into the welt and then stitched into the the midsole and the outsole so there's a little bit different there it isn't a true Goodyear welt it's more of an old school and when I say old school I mean almost like almost European uh, colonial days way of making a boot where they did do it by hand the only real machining here is the stitching on the machine, but it's all hand guided. Um, this one, the insoles, if you can see them, let's see, I don't know if you can see them there. The same way, the same way that Goodyear does, or um, sorry, Red Wing does it, is it's just a solid piece of leather there. And this one does not have the cork, so it is just rubber, leather, the, the rubber sole. Uh, leather midsole and then it has like I was saying has the leather shank and then it has a leather insole midsole insole and built up around it is solid leather uh, joined together with some uh, tacks nails and they also put some screws on here so when you do wear out your your stitching um, if you are in hot environments uh, fighting fire that the, the glue will heat up and delaminate, but the screws actually keep that on there so your sole won't just slip completely off. Uh, these, these shoes weigh three and a half pounds each, so you have seven pounds of boot on your foot when you're walking around in these. And these are the most uncomfortable boots to break in. You'll buy them and you'll think you got the wrong size. It'll pinch in here, it'll, it'll pinch on the side. It'll, uh, it might be a little uncomfortable here on the back stage just because it'll be kind of grinding into your, into your Achilles heel a little bit. And um, all of that happens just because the leather is going to be really tough. It's going to be new. And the same with the sole. As your foot sweats, as you uh, create heat, you're going to be in, putting an impression in that sole. And um, you're going to be breaking in the boot. So the best way I say to break these in is just with I do it with water. Nix recommends you spray bottle half water, half alcohol. I put the boots on, lace them up in kind of a, a mid to heavy uh, tightness and then when I go outside I put water on them with a the hose up to here. I don't dump water in the top. Some people will put them in the oven to heat them up to 150 degrees. Other people will fill it all the way up with water and put them on and walk around. I just pour water on the outside until I can feel a little bit of dampness on my feet on the inside. I do that all the way around. I go throughout the day wearing them and they'll dry off by the evening pretty quick within a few hours. The next day I'll do that the same way. That way I feel is the most uh, non-invasive way in my idea of breaking these in. 
and the quickest. I mean, I guess you could just wear them and it'd take a little bit longer. Then I apply my Obanoffs uh, lightly. There's some people, uh, Wrangler Star is one. Some of his early videos, that's how I found him, is I found him through uh, conditioning boots. He was using Obanoffs. But in my opinion, he puts way too much, or he was putting way too much um, conditioner, uh, oil, grease, however you want to call it, on his boots. They still need to have the semblance of leather. If they don't have the look of leather, if it's just one big floppy gummy piece of of uh, gelatinous blob, I mean, it'll get to that to where it's just, you look at some of his older videos on his boots, and they're just too gummy, they're just too gooey. And I think that actually lends to a, a shorter life of the boot. Um, I've kind of run into the same problem where I've kind of overzealous. I want to treat them. I want to put some grease on them every day and want to take care of them. I think you should. I think you should clean them. I've kind of neglected these. I need to clean them more. I think you should clean them, and I think you should lightly condition. Because if you go too much, it just really uh, oversaturates the leather and that those leather fibers, in my opinion, start to break down. So there's kind of a happy medium. You need to find it. If you put too much at one time, well, you can wash it off. You can brush it off with some water if you want to get in there really tight. Or you can just wear them, and over time, that um, that grease and that oil will uh, will back off. So um, there is my, I guess, my overview of kind of the two boots that I wear. Um, I'm actually wearing the, the 80, 81... Uh, 16s, the charcoal rough and tough. I call these copper rough and tough in an earlier video. But these are the charcoal rough and tough. These are the 8111s. These are the um, amber harness. And these are the smoke jumpers. Um, I think they just, I don't know what leather they call this. But normally they'll, they'll dye this black and dye this black. I ask for a natural edge. I like that color kind of stands out. You can sand it down, make it look nice. Lightly see the white's boots. Another thing, if you don't want to spend right off the bat $500 for these boots, $400 on a sale, go on eBay. On eBay, people are selling these boots all day long. And as long as, if you can look, the upper part looks good. You can even ask the seller, how's the uppers? You can send them and get them rebuilt for right around $250. So if it's a boot within your size, within I'd say a size up or a size down, I was a 11 and a half. So if you get a 12 or if you get a 10 and a half, I think you can send them back. I know you can send them back and they can rebuild them to your size. Um, if you just trace your foot or if you know your size, you can send it to them. That'll save you almost half as much. Spend 25, 50 bucks on an eBay pair of shoes, send them away $250 later. So you're in $300 for a custom built pair of shoes and the part that they keep is the upper part here. So so another not so quick video of my boots, kind of uh, just an overview. I had a couple questions about the insole, about um, I guess break how I break them in, how I wear them. I hope those answered your questions. I forget who, who, uh, who asked those questions, but I'll t try to tag you in there. Uh, go ahead and send me your questions, your reviews, your hate mail, and uh, what more videos you want to see. What videos more? What more? What videos you want to see me make? And I'll do that. I got some time on my hands, and I'm going to try to crank out a lot of videos this year. And I like the friendships that we're building. Have a wonderful afternoon. Adios.